HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on your server, which is a website. This one has access to a few APIs. It can be full screen. It actually can have app cache, have local storage. There's a great library we wrote for Firefox OS called a local forage, which you can use everywhere on the desktop now as well, which wraps local storage into IndexedDB, so you don't have the performance issues of local storage. We have installed web applications. These are applications that need to be packaged up with a manifest file and zipped up and can be installed in one go. We've got privileged web applications that get access to more things. And we've got certified web applications, which are device critical applications. Certified web apps are only built by Firefox and partners, uh, by Mozilla and partners, because these are really the things that have access to the address book. They can do telephone calls, they send text messages, the things you don't want anybody else to get access to. Privileged web applications just go through a security review and a content review before they're being published. App permissions are defined on the wiki, and the URL isn't there, but I'm sending this out later with all the links. And what you asked for is the permission. So contacts, I want to require for auto-completion on the share screen. Read, create to contacts, I want to have access to the alarms, required to share your notifications. So we don't just allow you to ask for it, but you also have to give a reason. Why do you ask for it? And if your app uses it to a different reason than the one that you defined, it's not going to go through the security review because you don't lie to us. What are web APIs? Web APIs are open specifications on accessing the hardware because these things become cool because you can do the things you can't do on desktop. You have an accelerometer, you have a camera, you got access to a vibration API, all the things that you want to make a phone to do. And on the web, we never had access to that. It was just not defined in HTML5 and nobody thought of it. So we came up with a whole set of APIs together with the W3C, with the What Working Group, to get you access to all these things in a JavaScript way. So vibration API, geolocation is one of the oldest, that was in, in Firefox 3.5 actually. WebFM API is the radio one that I talked about. And they all work similar. Battery status API, as I said, people are very excited about battery life. So if you in your app could read how much battery there's left and then maybe turn off some animations or turn off some background polling to make sure your application doesn't suck much battery, that's great, right? It's called Navigator Battery and it has a few settings like uh, battery level, battery charging, and has events that get fired when something changes. So you can actually read and write fully, to, not write to the battery, you can't charge it from JavaScript, that would be awesome, but you can. But you can just read out what the battery status is. That works on desktop, that works on Opera, that works on Chrome now as well. So these are all things that are open for every platform. That's why we do them to W3C and not just for ourselves. Vibration API, which used to be called a vibrator API, but there were too many stupid jokes about this, that's why we call it vibration API. <laughs> Navigator Vibrate 1000. Vibrate the phone for a doubt for one second. Or you give it an array, vibrate, stop, vibrate, stop, vibrate, stop. Of course, what do engineers do once we had this? Make a Morse coding thing, like that your phone vibrates and another one records it on the, uh, on the uh, well, we, we don't have much time. <laughs> Network information API. Is the thing currently connected? Do we have connection? Can I pull some new data? Or do I just tell the user, okay, there's no data left right now? Is the bandwidth, uh, High, is it low, is it, uh, is it wireless, is it 3G, is it 4G, is it 2G, and is it metered? Metered is a big thing. In, in most countries where we release Firefox OS, you pay per megabyte. And you pay up front, like I want to have two gigabyte or something like that. I guess it's here as well. In England, I don't have that. But um, we built an application together with Telefonica. The Telefonica guys actually came up with it that gives you full access to the phone and tells you what, how much you've used and how much more traffic you've got left and you get alarms when there's something going there. That may allows people to use apps accordingly. Page visibility is simply saying an event listener on visibility change and if the document is hidden, the document is currently not active. So don't go pulling things. Don't try to do things. That also works with uh, tabs. So in, in both Firefox and in Chrome, if you have a tab in the background, that you can read out that way if somebody is reading your app or not. So you can put a title there, please come back, I'm missing you, or something like that. Push notifications is a big thing that was a pain to get right. And we're still halfway there. Uh, and it's people from Google, people from Intel, people from Mozilla working together. Push notifications means I wake up your phone. Your phone is basically lying there. I got a new update for my app, and I want to make it. I want to wake it up and get information there. So you re register a message handler, push register, 
and say like, oh, my server is actually here. That one goes to the Mozilla server, does all the security checking and the, the uh, uh, like handshakes, and then says like, okay, here's your server connection for this phone, for this session. After that, Mozilla is not involved any longer. No, none of the data goes through our servers. We just do the authentication, which is very important because you don't want your app to go through another server other than the NSA that you can't control to actually try to actually read stuff from you. The push notification handler is the same thing. I got a notification and then I do things with my own server. So very simple, very way of doing it. It's a security nightmare to get this right, but we managed to do it and other people are implementing that one as well now. Because that's a big thing. You don't want your app to run all the time and pull and ask, because that costs battery, that, costs, that makes your phone hot. That's not nice. So a push notification, only tells you when there's something new and then wakes up the phone. That makes it much, much easier for battery life. Privileged apps have device storage, browser API. You can build your own browser inside an app if you want to. It's a bit like a web view, except it's like full access. TCP socket for chat things, contact APIs, system XHR in case you need to load data from the web. Contacts API is a demo. Create a new contact, new most contact, name Tom and you have an on-success and an on-error handler for that, and that's how easy it is to create a new, uh, a new contact on the phone. Reading the content, uh, contact is limited, but uh, you can request full access if it's actually hosted. Certified apps get the rest. Web telephony, do telephone calls, send text messages, change the settings, power management, mobile connection, and so on and so forth. These are the OS apps, the operating system applications. These are all HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. Nothing in there is something else. If you want to learn how they're built, look at GitHub. Look at the source code there. They're all there. Dialer, contact, camera, notes, first run experience. That also allows you as a phone provider to build a different home screen simply by writing an HTML page. And that was, of course, very interesting for people that get very locked out by other providers. Web activities are a way to actually make an ecosystem of applications in your operating system. So it's a bit like web intents, uh, <laughs> like Android intents, like web intents were. Um, it allows you to say, my app is the one for camera access. And the user then says like, okay, this is mine for camera access. And every time another app accesses the camera, it fires up your application. It's a bit like right click, open with, and right click, open always with on the desktop. It also allows you to tap into functionality of other applications that you don't have to do. So for example, access to the camera is limited. We can't allow any website to access the camera without asking the user, but people have a camera app. So what you do is you ask for an image. And then it says, do you want to get the image from the wallpaper, from the gallery, or from the camera? These are all three applications that registered themselves as being the handlers for images. My code is just mouse activity pick type image PNG, image JPEG, image JPEG, and there's a copy error in there. And then you got an on success handler and an on error handler, and that's about it. So you don't need to ask the user for access to the camera. You just ask the user for an image, and they do whatever they want to get an image into your app. And I like that. I don't want to have access to your address book in my application, because if I get hacked, I lose that. I keep it in your control. I don't care which app you use. And this is what most activities or what web activities do. Again, a proposal for other browsers to implement as well. App distribution, how do I get found? How do I actually get my app out there? Of course, we got a marketplace. Everybody has a marketplace. People love marketplaces. Until in two years' time when people don't like them any longer and realize it's actually a rather stupid idea. But right now, we have a marketplace where we have our reviews, we have our um, ratings, we have all the things that you have there. You upload your images, your videos, you get people to feedback and everything there. But you don't need it. And guess what? The marketplace is an HTML5 application. The source code is available. So if you want to build your own R marketplace as a mobile phone provider, for example, you can. Probably a stupid idea to have more than one marketplace on a phone. But if you want to make that mistake, go for it. If you just want to install an application, here's the five lines of JavaScript to do that as well. So this could be an event handler on a button that says, like, OK, install app, point to the manifest, and then install it, or an error, don't install it. That works on desktop, that works on Android, that works on Firefox OS for open web apps. That's why it's called open web apps and not Firefox OS apps. Works on every nice open platform, Linux, Windows, OS X, IO, 
and the other three. As the apps are HTML5, they're searchable, much like any other website is searchable. So instead of having to know the name of an application, I can enter the name of a band and it shows me music apps and ticket apps and information about bands. If I put the name of a recipe in there, I get cooking apps. If I find, put the name of a movie in there, I get movie apps. These are localized. If I'm in Brazil and I enter football, I get the sport and not the rugby in two lines that cause concussions that you have here. This is where my local apps will come will be found by people. This is where it gets really interesting because I never understood that I have to know the name of an app. I never understood as an app developer I have to spend a lot of money on marketing to get people to know what my application does. In this case, you could list as the, as the biggest app out there without any advertising. Something like Flappy Bird managed to do by using Twitter and Facebook. But this could be in the search in the phone itself. And these are all try before you buy. So these are just HTML5 apps that run right now, that load in a few K, not in like the 50 meg that you need to download. You play with the app, you like it, you install it. You don't like it, you discard it. Much like we use the web. Why do I need a weather app? I go to Google and I say like weather San Francisco. And I get a small page telling me what it is, like 5K of loading rather than like installing 50 meg. It comes with the operating system as well. It's like the people that install birthday apps on Facebook. You know that Facebook tells you about birthdays, right? Like, why is there another app for that? It fascinates me. Development environment. How do I develop for it? Well, the browser displays it. So why should the browser not be the development environment? Chrome understands that. Safari understood that. Internet Explorer understands that. And we, of course, as well. So here's a little video explaining what that does. So that's the app manager. Uh, this is the next Australis Firefox, how it will look like with the rounded corners. The app manager allows you to connect a phone with USB. So I could do that live right now, but the demo gods will probably not be with me. And I connect the phone, I connect to the phone. I have to say on the phone as well that I want to connect, so you cannot connect to somebody else's phone. And then I just in import the app. I can go to a URL with a manifest, and I can actually go to my own hard drive and package and go there. Once I have it, I just update and that installs the app on my phone itself and then I can start playing with it. I can install both apps and the web developer tools that you use to debug websites also debug the apps or even package apps. So I can now say debug here in this application and I get the developer tools. So I get the HTML and I can rename things. I can shift things around. I can actually see how the app is being created. And I can easily fix things without having to go through another packaging process, sending to the marketplace, hoping people like it, hoping what's going on. So I can click on the phone as well itself to actually select things in the HTML, much that I can actually on the desktop. I can mess with the CSS. If out of a sudden I want to have a border around these buttons, I can just put a border in there and try that out. So for prototyping the next version of your, AP, of your app, that's wonderful because you can see the problems directly on the phone and you can find out what's going there. You have a debugging in JavaScript. You can set your debugging points. You can actually find out where the uh, where the, the memory goes. You have full access to the app. So this is the home screen of uh, HTML uh, of Firefox 1.3. But I can now go into that design and actually completely mess around with it. So I can say instead of the var uh, a variable here, a CSS variable, which is now in CSS as well, you don't need any preprocessor for that. All of a sudden, I make the icons round. I put a, a white border around it. I play with it. And that's the, the experience when I would start the phone. So this is the desktop itself. It's like styling the start bar in, Fire, uh, in Windows, or start, styling the dock in OS X, which you, of course, are not allowed. But as everything is HTML5, I can easily play around with that and debug it. The browser is the way to consume, but also the way to create. This is good, because people download that thing once, and it might take them ages to get it. So why should they have to go for another SDK and do other things there? So you can resize the icons with a bit of CSS. You can then save it back to your hard drive, package it up again, send it back into the marketplace, and you're done. You can even rotate the icons if you want to. Don't know why we did that, but fair enough. <laughs> There's a great app called Firefox OS Boilerplate app, which has buttons for everything that Firefox OS can do. So these are all the, um, the web activities. You can download that one, play with it, remove the buttons you don't need, put your own buttons in, make millions. As simple as that. Make Prototype with JS Fiddle. If you use JS Fiddle already to play around with it, please use it. It's the best 
thing ever, or, or Dablet, or CodePen.io. There's nothing better than putting code out there and letting people play with it. JS Fiddle now also has uh, um, Together JS in it, so you can actually press a button and have an audio chat with people while you're actually coding together. Great for job interviews. Really, really good because you can see people while they're doing something and explaining why they're doing it. So in JS Fiddle, all you have to do is slash web app manifest to the end of the URL to create a manifest and slash fox html to install this application as a Firefox OS app and try it out on your phone. That way you can just mess around, you can go to Stack Overflow, get people to tell you what to do and other people to tell you this is something different and one or two people trying to help you. And then you can actually build your app that way. Building blocks, the big thing people ask for, like, Ooh, where can I start? Where do I get my bootstrap for Firefox OS? We didn't make any, because we wanted you to have the choice. But we realized by now we need to make any. People don't do that anymore. So there's buildingfirefoxos.com, which is the building blocks of the operating system itself, with the source code and explanations why it is the way it is. There's Mozilla Brick, which is a very, very small JavaScript library that actually is a web components library. So as soon as web components will get into browsers, don't have to do anything else, it's done. It works that way. So if you want to have, for example, a flip box, all you have to do is X flip box, I'm the front face, I'm the back face, and a toggle button to shift them around. The difference here in web components, and I could talk about web components for hours because I love them, is we don't work against the browser. This animation works while the browser is painting the screen already. It's not the browser is painting the screen and then we have to make sure we don't interfere with it. We can build widgets with web components that are part of the browser, much like a Dropbox now, where a select element would create a Dropbox. And that's really, really important that we go to this. And I hope that every browser will more and more support that, because I'm tired of working against the browser. And I worked in Yahoo and other people. We had a lot of this stuff in the years. So what's cooking? What's next? Cordova implementation APIs are a thing that's going to be, I guess, announced next week. Or something like that. I don't know if I'm violating some terms and conditions right now, but fuck it. So, Cordova is basically PhoneGap. It's uh, what everybody uses to build HTML5 apps for Android and iOS. And Firefox OS is just another way of building apps from, from uh, PhoneGap now. It's a bit weird, because PhoneGap is there to make HTML5 into native code. So, with Firefox OS, we make native code into native code. But if you're already going the Cordova way, probably a bad idea to tell you to do something else. That's why we actually went with them. And they're great guys. Brian LaRue is a good friend of mine. They're awesome. So camera, context, device, device motion, geolocation, orientation, vibration, all of those are implemented. You in PM install Cordova, you create a hello com example, hello world, go into the folder, add platforms, add Firefox OS, prepare Firefox OS, done. Send it to the marketplace, make millions in markets day where you're not right now. Camera API looks like this. Camera, get picture, function source, get an image, and that's basically that. So that's much simpler than going through the web, uh, web activities because it stays in the same application. More web APIs are coming, UDB, peer-to-peer -peer API, web NFC, web USB, and we have an app maker for kitten apps. That's basically uh, uh, what you see is what you get editor, where every single control that you drag in is a web component in itself that's targeted at mom and dad users that want to build an app. It's not for professionals, it's like the what you see is what you get Dreamweaver style thing for building apps. Take a look at that thing, it's amazing, and please bug them to make that more professional for professional users as well, because for me, this is the perfect blueprinting tool for apps. Why should I start from scratch every single time when I could drag and drop a thing together and make my app with a few clicks of a button? The developer hub is where you get all the information that you need, how to design a good HTML5 app, the design principles behind HTML5 and Firefox OS, how to build your app, how to publish your app. There's the Mozilla developer blog, which I'm one of the writers of, uh, where there's a Firefox category which has like weekly things on Firefox OS. There's a video series where they put me next to unfortunate people that got interviewed by me that talked about different things about the Firefox OS system. Oh god, the cameraman on this one was so... He's like, you know, switching between him and you all the time, like, the light of my camera was just absolutely annoying. It's just wonderful. There's a wiki that tells you everything about Firefox OS. Not only about HTML5, but also if you want to be part of the operating system and build part of the core. Like, help us with NFC, help us with USB. We, this is all, like, C++, Linux stuff, and also JavaScript in terms of Gaia. 
And to wrap up, as a friend of mine, Penelope Pickles, she's in Canada, awesome, awesome lady of the internet, nothing is wasted. You don't have to buy into Firefox OS. You don't have to tell me like, ooh, I'm gonna build Firefox OS only right now. What you build for Firefox OS goes into HTML5, goes on every platform out there with Cordova, with other platforms. You don't do anything that is only for us. You can, I like that. Actually, I don't care. I actually like it if you build for everybody. But, H but Firefox OS is the only platform that's completely open and supports the dreams that basically Steve Jobs had when he talked about there's no SDK for HTML5. This is a list of applications that we're actually talking about at Mobile World Congress that came from other platforms, that were written for other platforms and then just converted for Firefox OS. And the blog post in the, in the bottom tells you basically what people have to do to convert them to Firefox OS. And it's never more than a two or three day process because it is just going back to the web, what we've done already. And that's all I had, so thanks very much. Are we on time? Got a question? Yeah. Yeah, so you briefly mentioned the uh, operator billing component, but in the rest of the presentation, you didn't actually go into any of the aspects of monetization. So I was wondering maybe you could say a couple of words about Actually, you, know, you said a bunch of times, oh, make lots of money, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, monetization model is exactly the same as in other marketplaces as well. I mean, as I said, you can do your own distribution, then you can do your own, uh, uh, your own uh, uh, monetization as well, which is actually quite good for somebody who has, for example, a news page. Uh, an already existing website, they want to turn into an app, all they have to do is put a manifest file and use the traffic that they're getting already for people to install their app. Um, with the marketplace listings, we've got a 70-30 split, like all the other marketplaces as well, of the money coming in. And uh, we have APIs for, monetize, uh, for making payments, and a web payment API, which is an open API, and an in-app payment as well. You can choose your own provider. You don't have to use Mozilla to actually uh, do it. You can do it with, with uh, uh, Banco is one big one that we're partnering with. Um, PayPal is another one. So the system is again, it's the same as like with the push notifications, we just do the encryption and the validation of the payment. The payment provider is something that you can pick for yourself. And that's basically the monetization model there. Nothing different to others except for we don't take the lion's share and we don't basically lock you out for uh, in certain markets. And as we partner with Bango, it's not only sellable in certain markets, but actually worldwide. Hope that answers the question. I'm nice. set you up. Oh, nice. So what did you do? Did it don't work there anymore? I was the local rep. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So uh, this is actually the emulator here as well. So if you um, if you just want to see, you don't need a phone because the phones are actually there. Sold on eBay, you can get them, yes. But you can actually just use the simulator. If I click Start Simulator here, I can pick which version of Firefox OS. It connects. It gives me a phone on my computer. And then I can do all the things that I can normally do with a nice app. Maybe it's a bit smaller here. And for example, here I've got this to do app. Let's uh, uninstall this one. I'm clicking along here, the also to do app. Clicking this one along. And I always like them when they're like, oh, don't delete me, don't delete me. Oh, I've got the power. <laughs> so now I can say add a app packaged app. And all I have to do is go to my hard drive. Go to my htdocs folder here. Um, where is it? Firefox OS something. Video script, to do app, finished. Open this one. It packages up automatically, creates a zip file for me. There's a manifest file in there so it knows which files to put in. And then I can start update and the application has been installed on my phone. I can double click it and I've got a great to do app. And then I can basically go into like debugging here and look at the HTML of my uh, of my app. And I can rename the header from to do to, for example, to Toto, and out of a sudden it becomes much more important in Kansas. And I've got my Toto app, I can change the style, I can change the box model, I find all the CSS that has been applied to it, so I change the background color here to another color. So you can mess around with the apps in the device until you have it. 
And I've done that, for example, uh, if you have been outside of our office here, which is just down the road, there's this monument um, that shows all the people that worked on, um, on Firefox or on, with Mozilla in the past. So I've got this Mozilla... No, wait a minute, doesn't look this wrong one. Yeah, this is what it looks like, to a degree. And you can basically put in your name and you find where on the application you are. And I created that thing on a flight, offline, in the browser, and that managed to actually put it on my server and install it on Firefox OS devices within two hours because it's just HTML. And everything I did in the simulator without going in a, in a phone and connected on the plane because that might have gotten the flight attendant towards me that I'm building a bomb or something like that. But all I had to do was the emulator. My browser is my space where I build things and it's my space where I serve things. And that's the way it should be to me. So if there's no more questions, I guess we have to move on. Yeah. Uh, my name is Sandeep. So we do some work, uh, ICT work in developing countries. So it's really great to see you focusing on that part. So um, my question is, how are you choosing the carriers to work with? Right? So this is great that you can build apps in this environment, but the challenge of distribution, getting the phones, especially the carriers to work with you, they're not very cooperative with that So do you have any thoughts like how you select carriers and how, how what's the like quickest path to getting some of these apps out in those places? Well, carriers come up to us. Uh, there was actually a big there was a big gap in the market because carriers were annoyed by other platforms not playing with them nicely and basically just saying like, oh, we got the phones, we got the operating system, you just sell the phones. So Telefonica was, was the first partner that we had and it was hilarious because they built their first HTML5 application platform internally and then we released Firefox OS as an idea and the source code two days later and they're like, oh my God, that's so much better than the stuff that we did. So we're actually working with them through that. So all of the engineers came onto the project, got full-time allocation, and worked with them. We have an outreach team that talks to different providers, but we want to make sure that people, uh, that, that first of all, they can deliver. Like just saying, get your name on it and not bring out any phones is a problem to us. And also, uh, we don't want you to take over. We also say, this is an open operating system. We're not going to build a locked interface on top of that. Like most of our providers, there's a few legal issues still. Most of our providers, for example, sell the phones unlocked as well. So you can put their SIM card in, but any other SIM card as well. And um, so this is one way of doing it. They're mostly coming to us. Mobile World Congress, of course, is a big one where everybody is. So we gonna. I did 42 interviews last year in three days. So this is going to be the same thing there. We're going to meet a lot of people there. Originally, we had 18 partners, but a lot of them haven't delivered. So we just got down to seven now, and probably there will be a next swing this time. We also this year want to start publishing phones without a partner. Like you can go into shop and buy them. You can also buy, you can already buy e, uh, on, e, on eBay, you can already buy with uh, uh, Geek's phone in Spain, you can also buy phones already. And we want to make that, especially for the Indian market and the Bangladesh market, we just realized there's no point in trying a provider that people have to sign a 24 month contract to get a phone. So instead we're going to build directly, work directly with hardware partners to get phones into the shops. So, it's a process where they come to us and as we were the only ones that were new on the market and were interesting enough, I wish there were more. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wishing Ubuntu, I'm wishing Tizen, I'm wishing Sailfish all the best in the world. Please, please do more open platforms. We need them. And we don't want to own that space. We just want to be the thorn in the side of the ones that make everything close. And we managed to prove that within two years and I'm super excited about this because seeing an operating system come from a, empty repository on GitHub to be released in 18, in 18 countries in two years is incredible. Good. Talk about great operating systems. Let's go to Google Chrome. <laughs>